All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, Play Fast Football. All right, today we're going to do a video talking about tempo teams and P and 10 calls, or calls that are uh, drive starters or maybe timeouts, things that are coming from a sideline where you can huddle with your players. Make sure you check out some of our partners, Game Stride Sideline Replay Company. We use, if you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out Game Stride Dome Hats, the headwear company we use. This is one of our newer, all right, I wear this as a practice hat at Bishop Kenny. All right, BK football on the front, dome logo on the side, soft trucker mesh. All right, I carry it as one of my practice hats so that I don't have to worry about how dirty it gets. I've got a game hat, practice hat. Sometimes I like to keep one for games, one for practice. Completely customizable. Stock hats suck. Make sure you check out Dome Baker Sporting Goods. It's a company we use for uh, our sideline gear, coaches gear. Uh, shirts like this are done by Baker Sporting Goods. Our uniforms are distributed from Baker Sporting Goods. They're in the shoulder pad world now with Pro Gear. Make sure you check them out. Just Play Football, which is the playbook software we use. A lot of our meetings are done through there. Installs, presentations. Uh, our playbook is in there. You can quiz your players using videos, diagrams, so make sure you check out Just Play. And then Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine. Get thousands of reps. Don't need a partner. Don't have to teach anybody how to hold a hand shield, how to provide resistance. They hook right up to the racks in your weight room currently, so it's just players. Difference USA machine. You want to strike violently, you got to practice striking violently. So if you are a tempo team, one of the things you got to keep in mind is the manner of communication, your playbook. A lot of the things you're doing are always going to be streamlined so that you can play faster. So you're probably not going to use a ton of shifts and trades and motions and things if you want to snap the ball every six, eight seconds, whatever your time is, or four seconds from the ref spotting the ball in play. If you're going to try and do that, then you're going to have to limit formations. You're going to have to limit shift trades and motions. You're going to have to have some default things set in where maybe you play with a left and a right wide receiver and then you've got a hybrid 11 personnel or slot guy and he's the only one that changes. And maybe you set your default formations to the field and you only change a guy when the field side changes. You have to look at how you are going to play faster. So there's always going to be certain things you need to do to play as fast as possible, which means you've got to streamline the communication, a lot of one word calls, a lot of the things you're doing so that you can't carry all the things you may want to carry in your offense, in your tempo setting. The way that you can do that though, to still game plan the things that you want to game plan, to still game plan some movements and some shift trades motions. You can do that with your P and 10 calls coming out. So when you start a drive, that's a play that's coming from the huddle. If it's coming from the huddle, I have all 11 players there. I can use extra words. I can take my time calling the play as long as I get the, the, my team out on the field ready to play and a ball snapped before the 25 second clock. But we have way more time in that setting to do the things that we want to do that we cannot do when we're tempo. Right, so if I've got all 11 guys, I can talk to them about, hey guys, we're gonna go, all right, we're gonna go quads to the field, trade, motion, whatever your terminology is. Those are all things that you can do from a huddle. Now, you could do it from a timeout, you could do it from a water break. It's any time that you have the group with you and you can use more terminology, more verbiage. So what makes it fun is you can now start to game plan some of those things. So like the first thing you could do is if you came out with a quad set, okay, and you came out with a quad set with the tight end, all right, that set to the field side. You could come out and have a play call where you're gonna run now one to the field, and if the quarterback likes the numbers, he can rip the now screen to the field. If he doesn't like the numbers, you're gonna go ahead and trade the tight end, all right, and then after you trade the tight end, you're gonna motion one of the receivers across, and you're gonna have some type of pin-pull play, all right, where you can get two guys out, all right, so in other words, your quads to the field, taking a now screen if you like it, but if the quarterback doesn't like it, now you got a chance to jump the tight end over and motion a guy. So now you're showing quads to the field, trade the tight end. So if they had the front set to the tight end, can they adjust and, and kick the front the other way? Are they gonna, if they're an over front team, are they gonna change the three? Are they gonna change, all right, the, the two eye? And then you motion back, so now they've gotta make another rotation. So at the snap of the ball, you end up in two by two, tight end flanker twins, which is a normal set for most offenses. You just did it with window dressing and you did it in a manner to where you were able to communicate more things. This, this could be a very simple package play. Hey guys, we're quads, 
now screen. If we don't get the now screen, we're going jump, fly, whatever your terminology is, right? So when you're coming out P and 10, or you're coming out of a water break, or you're coming out of a timeout, these are the things that you can do as a tempo team that allow you, all right, that allow you to game plan some different things that you like without always having to be stuck in your default formations, one word play calls, right? And then you're kind of given the illusion of tempo, right? So we're going to go fast. You know we go fast, but all of a sudden on this first rep, maybe we snap it and we run, all right? Maybe we snap it and we run the one-step screen, but maybe we don't. You still have to line up because we're a tempo team, all right? So it's always that illusion of the tempo that's going on. Then we jump the tight end, we motion back, and we go pin-pull, all right, to the boundary. Maybe you can put everything into the boundary from your normal base sets that you use, all right? So maybe you can come out with a slot set to the boundary, back to the field, okay? So you're showing them trips into the boundary. Maybe you force them to make some type of rotation into the boundary. Maybe it's a three deep check. Okay, but then you're going to jump the tight end over. Okay, and then you're going to motion the slot. And now you're back into your three by one the other side. And now you're going to come back and you're going to run like one of your RPO deals. All right, so maybe you'll come back and you'll run counter, and off the counter you're going to run glance to two, fin to one, with a backside access over here. So all you're really doing is you're taking your base offense, the things that you always do. So if you carry the counter play, you're taking the things that you always do, and now because in the tempo world these things have to be faster, communicated faster, less, less time to shift. If we, if we have to jump the tight end, motion somebody across, all right, so if we started with trips to the boundary, we jump the tight end, we motion across, there's no way we can snap the ball as fast as we want, all right? But on your PN10s, you're not really worried about that. It's the illusion of that tempo, but we're not really worried about snapping the ball 100 miles an hour. The defense is coming from the sideline as well, okay? Now, the thing that I like about a setting like this is if this was the boundary over here, okay, now what I'm doing is I'm showing you a look into the boundary. I'm forcing you to possibly check to the boundary. Then I'm jumping to tight end and I'm motioning to the field to see how you're going to adjust and rotate. Maybe I can get a rotation to the field so the counter play back to the single is in really good shape. But the other thing I like is now in the tempo world, when it gets to second down, all right, there's a really good chance that if the ball stays near the left hash, we can line up in the same formation again, and we can have something that we know we can gas up. Because after we jump the tight end, right, so after we traded the tight end, okay, and got to a point where we traded the tight end and then we motioned, right, so we traded the tight end and then we motioned, now we're in three by one to the field. So as long as the ball stays near this left hash mark, we're good to go in our next formation. So the next play we call, can be ramped up pretty quick. So that's another great thing about P and tens is you can build in these shifts, trades, and motions, okay? But then you could also build them in a way to where you know what your next formation is gonna be, so now you can guess the tempo on that next formation. All right, similar to that first one we drew up. Okay, maybe we can go with like a two-back. So maybe we can go with like a two-back quads look where let's just say we're gonna cover up so we're going to put three receivers to the field. We're going to have a Y off, okay? So we're going to have three receivers to the field. We're going to go Y off, all right, in some type of setting. And now what we're going to do is we are going to, again, use some window dressing. So we're going to use some window dressing now where we're going to start this way, all right? When we come out, we're going to jump the tight end backside, okay? After we jump the tight end, we are going to motion across the formation, all right? And then 
After that, we are going to come back and run zone read bluff, and we're going to bring a tight end back to the field. We're in a, we're in a two-back trips formation, so the one and two are on, and number two is ineligible. But we're going to throw, if we do throw the ball, we're going to throw it behind the line of scrimmage. So we're going to give you quads to the field. Okay, so the original drawing. Quads to the field. All right, we're going to jump, trade the tight end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump, trade the tight end. Then we're going to motion. Okay, and then we're going to go back and we're going to run zone bluff. So now coming off the motion, we're going to come back and we're going to go zone theories. We're going to read the end. We're going to go inside zone. After we trade the tight end, now we're going to bring him back here. Bluff it to the flat. Two can block. One can block. We're going to read the end and we're going to go zone read. We're going to run one of our normal RPOs. Zone read bluff. Zone read sneak to the flat. We can do it from this unbalanced formation with one and two on. Two can go down the field and block because we're going to throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, so it's not going to be an illegal player downfield. All right, we're not going to have any issues with illegal players downfield because we're going to make sure the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage. We're not going to throw that forward pass across the line of scrimmage. Right, so now we can keep one and two on the line. All right, and then we can motion across, give you a jump tight end, a motion. Now we give you all that. You're going to have to maybe take the corner out. If you had a corner in the box, whatever your adjustment is, he's going to have to widen out. If you were poaching the backside, maybe the weak side safety's got to come back over. But then we're going to go right back with our zone replay, and we're going to bluff it and throw it there, right? So we're getting in a world where we're building in some really nice uh, P and 10 plays, right? Guys that like the game plan, guys that like to tinker, guys that like to draw plays. Now in that tempo world, you feel like you get handcuffed a little bit and you can't draw as many plays as you like. So now on the P and 10s or the dead balls, now this is where you've got your menu of things that you want to work on, things that you want to talk to your players about and go, hey guys, in these situations, here's what we're going to do. This week we're going to go quads, jump to the boundary, motion back to two by two or whatever it may be, whatever your theory is, now you're getting a chance to work that theory all the time. All right, so you got to make sure that you understand that your P and 10s and your dead ball situations, that's where you're going to uh, diagram and draw and come up with a lot of your uh, you know, beaters or things that shots or things that you want to do because you know you can use more verbiage, more terminology, and you don't have to worry about the pace of play when you're coming from the sideline and you have all those players with you so you can use more terms and, and vocabulary with them when they're all in the huddle with you. All right, so uh, I hope you guys appreciate this video. Just another look at tempo and some different things you can do uh, in the tempo world and how you can build in these P and tens and some of these dead ball calls when you are coming from the sideline. All right, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn your notifications on. You know, every time we do something on YouTube or we go on YouTube Live, thumbs up, thumbs down. If you like the content or you don't like the content, always leave me a comment. I respond to every comment I can see on my end. All right, if your season has started, hope you're off to a good start. Hopefully you guys won, you're healthy. Uh, if your season hasn't started yet, then good luck to you. Uh, everybody in Florida, and especially on the West Coast, uh, hope everybody is safe. Uh, from the hurricane that we just had come through. Uh, we got lucky in Northeast Florida, but uh, our game was already canceled this week, so no game for us. But uh, if your season started, good luck. Hope you're winning. If your season's about to start, good luck. Uh, appreciate everything you guys do for me. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I will see you next time.